way to the uh, tropical walk through Avery. We miss, missed that yesterday. Um, now, what we walk through here is uh, yeah, a range of, of saltwater crocodile enclosures. And what I really like, which I've seen, wildlife habitat, um, and I'm sure there's a heap of other places I just haven't explored a lot, is like, yeah, I'm on this boardwalk and they can cross underneath, which is really cool. So, it was in here, there was a sign in here, I'm pretty sure this is Boris and his girlfriend. They're at the backs, or another male in there. Anyway, I'm getting someone who's a bit closer. But otherwise, heap of salties. They've got an exceptional, like exceptional amount of saltwater and freshwater crocodiles. I can't get over how many they've got. Some Merton's water monitors back there, which is probably one of the, my favorite species of monitor. I really get around those. They're wicked, semi-aquatic, going under the water, grabbing prey and that kind of stuff. So the tails are built a bit more different, a bit different uh, for, for swimming, locomotion under the water. And then this is their largest crocodile, uh, Zach, his name is. So, him and his girlfriend here. And if you're not already aware, saltwater crocodiles being the largest living reptile uh, in the world. And they have got him last measured at five meters, 700 kilos, whether that's an approximate weight I'd actually weigh him, not 100% sure. And yeah, 70 years approximately. Beautiful. So a lot of these animals have been nuisance animals by the sounds of things. They've come in because they're taking livestock, they're taking pets, that kind of thing, which is obviously not ideal. And uh, as I'm talking, I'll just show you, there's a heap of frillies in here. But they come here, which is really good. And they go to different facilities uh, around the country or where they're close to, to be, uh, yeah, to be a display animals coming out of the, the ecosystems if they are doing that kind of stuff. If they're doing their own thing, that's where they remain out in the wild. But if they're taking livestock and becoming a danger to people and taking pets and that kind of thing, they, uh, yeah, they deemed that they can't remain and they have to be removed. You can see some little heads there with their American alligators. And again, wicked sort of like habitat design. I really like that. It's like your, what I would assume, um, some of your, like your Florida, uh, yeah, sort of causeway or whatever they, not causeway, but swampy areas. You've got your little huts, your, your stuff like that. But it's, um, it's really excellent in the way they've set it out and the, the, the stuff, the, uh, the habitat design in these enclosures they've got for these animals. Really, really, really happy with that. So I don't know how good of a uh, idea you're getting of size with these guys, but um, yeah, some massive salties as we saw with, with Zach over there. This is Spartacus, a massive salty. And you got another massive one out the back over here in uh, Sultan is his name. Um, incredible animals just to see the few, the sheer size. Got my words mixed up there, but just the sheer size of these guys is incredible. Incredible, and uh, yeah, just imagining like this is a big animal in a captive facility, but they get up to this size and they are out there in the wild at this size. How incredible! And it just goes to show that although one male crocodile like this will, will dominate a, a water system, and there's not going to be heaps and heaps of them in a small area this size, they are still out there, and you'd really have to be croc, -croc wise in croc country as they say because guys like this are out there and um and even if they're not his size they are they are fierce animals that, that should not be should not be messed with at all all righty ah it's already looking like not as fantastic as i would have hoped that it's just a a small one I thought it was more of a big, like, or walk-through kind of thing, but it is just this little deck area, which is still really good. And apparently it's still under maintenance, so... I don't know, maybe it's not under maintenance, there's still a heap of birds cruising around. But yeah, still a wicked enclosure. I love my birds more than anything else, so it's still a wicked aviary to be in. But uh, who have we got? Let's get a list of everyone we've got in here. There's your coels, quoll, quoll, coals. 
coals or coals. Storm birds, I think they people call them as well. But wicked, wicked little lavery. It's not huge. It's not a nice big walk through one or a decent walk through one, but it's still got some some beautiful species showcasing what you can find up here. In your uh, your wonga pigeons that I just showed, some shell ducks. It's down there, another wonga pigeon, glossy ibis, that kind of thing. Mainly some doves and pigeons, really. You can hear them uh, talking as well. But yeah, still, still really nice. But yeah, all species in here uh, are definitely ones I want to see in the wild, um, if I haven't already. Uh, yeah, so it's just a wicked showcase of, of stuff that yeah is out there and stuff if you, you look hard enough if you're lucky enough you can see hopefully you can get a nice little view of this fig bird male fig bird there beautiful hey buddy excellent and a little buff banded rail honestly this freshie exhibit is a plus i love it there's it's an insane amount of freshies as I was saying earlier, insane amount of crocodiles everywhere. But how you're walking along this boardwalk, they go and can go underneath, and there's a whole back pond uh, that they can go into. It loops around to as well, which I'll uh, I'll hook around and, and have a better look at as well. But they're, wherever you look, they're all over the banks. They're all popping up out of the water. This bank over here, I don't know how much you can see, but there is a heap way over in that corner, which we'll look at in a second. But um, yeah, just the, the natural environment they've got here or how they've created this natural environment is is wicked. It looks just like how you would reckon you'd see them out in the wild. So yeah, look at that. Absolutely stellar exhibit. It's still going back, goes to that far end. I don't know if you can see people through there. Huge, huge lagoon area. And there's freshies popping up everywhere, all over the banks. That bank has got the most on it, right in front of us. But yeah, loops all the way back around here. So, wicked um, sort of just dropping of the enclosure, um, or the barriers, in this natural environment. Um, but uh, yeah, beautiful lagoon, beautiful sort of vegetation cruising around. Heaps of space for them because there is an absolute ton of freshies in here. But, but this is actually like, yeah, they've just sort of, you've almost come across the animals and there's just enclosures around them, um, which is entirely not the case because I went on the boat ride yesterday and um, yeah, they said they dug out that whole section. So it was actually a, a horse paddock or something and they've dug it out and they filled it with water, like packed it all up. Um, so the water would keep and then they've, they've made a lagoon there. So whether she was pulling my leg, I highly doubt they were. I think it is something that they would have and, and could have easily created, um, being where we are. But um, yeah, absolutely wicked stuff. Wicked, wicked stuff. Crocodiles are, are amazing. Are truly, truly amazing animals. Cool, so I'm on my way now to the uh, crocodile farm. See if I can get... I don't know if you have to have a tour to be able to look through there or you can just have a, a wander through and have a look and there's signs and information that kind of stuff i'm not sure but the next tour it's 10 56 now the next tour i think it was at at one o'clock uh because that's what my boat tour was yesterday so probably won't stick around for that tour today this way but otherwise uh yeah i thought i'd give you guys a bit more information oh beautiful butterfly cruising around I'm not sure if that's a, one of the largest, one of the bird wings. I'm not 100%. But it is a pretty big one. Anyway, give you guys a bit of information about the park, um, like opening times, that kind of stuff, uh, while we're cruising through. Um, halfway through the video, but better than nothing. So, what is it, opening about 8.30, opening 8.30, closing at 5. The talks uh, are awesome. Um, the reason I had to come back today, I rocked up at about 10.30 yesterday, should have rocked up a bit earlier, um, but otherwise the talks really do take up um, a lot of the day there. They're excellent talks, this is one of the amphitheatre and display areas, the smaller one here. Um, they're excellent talks, they were fantastic, um, but jumping from talk to talk and then going on to the boat tour, boat tour was 20 minutes and that was included in the uh, 
ticket to come. So ticket lasts three days. Even if you're here on the first day, it is $43 and it includes a boat ticket. Uh, this is a lagoon or the lagoon that the boat tours run on. And there's a boat just coming in at the moment, just finishing up the tour. Mine was at one, then I saw tickets for 1.30. I think they run every half an hour, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, beautiful area that they have apparently dug out and, um, and made this lagoon in. It took bloody ages. But yeah, I look like an idiot if they haven't, if it's naturally occurring, but it does, uh, it does seem like a really sort of structured really well loop. Um, uh, so yeah, sounds like it would, would have been, and it could have been um, made up by them. But there you go, they, boat tours are included, go for 20 minutes. Most of the talks are half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, and so excellent talks and they, they are really informative and really great, but they do take a bit of time um, out of your day. And then I run out of time yesterday because of it. Uh, it used to be legal to shoot the crocodiles if they were eating your cows, because obviously cows are pretty expensive. Luckily for Don, they didn't want to do that. They thought he was a really cool animal, they didn't want him dead, they just wanted him to stop eating the cows. So rather than shoot him, they contracted someone to come and catch him, and he got a swift ticket to Hartley's. No access to the crocodile farm outside of tour times. I, um, yeah, I won't stick around to, to look at the the farm. I should have come at a better time, but otherwise, it's something that I I won't mind missing out on. It's a bit of signage and all that kind of stuff about it, but I wasn't, yeah, incredibly interested in the farm side of things. Um, yeah, basically, like. I love to see all of the wildlife, all of the natural habitat and all that kind of stuff done up and what you can see in the wild and, and all those naturalistic exhibits. Uh, but otherwise a farm, I'm not too interested in about the farming of the crocodiles for their, their meat, their skins and all that kind of stuff. I do see that it, its purpose and why it's done and all that kind of stuff and for all farming purposes and that kind of stuff um, done in and around animals. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, this won't, that won't be in this part of the video. Uh, yeah, if you come and ever go, nine and, and one at the current tour times and you can have a look around um, and get a bit of more information and that kind of stuff but it's not something i'm interested in and um and something I'll, I'll stick around for i'll um i'll look at a bit other stuff then i'll head off spend already a couple of hours here again today uh it was just to get mainly the commentary and that kind of thing going down and um and then i'll head off and and uh yeah and end it there so i don't know if i saw this earlier but you would have seen in the pacific bars are just before uh, one eye on her, this guy has got sort of one good eye, one bad eye. So I'd already assumed it, but uh, a lot of the ways raptors come in, I don't know if you can see, I think that's a Papuan up there, frogmouth on a nest in the, the fork of the tree, you might be able to see. But a lot of these raptors, and a lot of raptors in general, I think come in as, whoops, barnia, as injured individuals. Yeah, all right, he just had the barnia fly over his head, so he's not feeling. 100% about that but yeah they've come in as injured birds uh, by the look of things so uh, yeah it is the case for a lot of places that I've known you come in as injured or orphaned if you're too young and you can't be released or if you have injuries that don't uh, allow your successful release back out into the wild you come to facilities like this um, and it looks like for these well the, for the boo book in particular for the barn uh, for the Pacific Vaza crested hawk 
uh, that is the that is the case there. So I'm pretty happy. I've seen everyone that is in here. I'm pretty sure I've seen both the Papuan and the uh, 20 frog males in here. It's just the mast now that I've missed out on, which uh, would have been really nice to see a mast now. But uh, there you go. I've seen a pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good to see uh, almost all of them uh, cruising around in the barn now and the frog mouth just up there now. Beautiful. Excellent. So yeah, over yesterday I spent five odd hours here um, and another couple hours here today. Uh, come back seven hours or so in total. It is a whole day thing, particularly if you want to see all of the shows. Um, that's a sea eagle. I, I don't think it's a captive sea eagle because there's a pair of them. You hear that? That is definitely a pair of seagulls. And on the boat tour yesterday, they were talking about how they have got a pair that uh, hangs around and is starting to nest around their lagoon. Oh, sick. So I started to think they've got some cool stuff out the back that they're keeping from us <laughs> with the seagull, but I reckon that's the wild ones. So didn't get to see them, but got to hear them. So that's, that, is, uh, that is pretty cool. So yeah, definitely if you want to see everything in one day it's going to be a long day but spend the whole day here get here early if you want to see all the shows the shows uh, are really good but it means that you have got less time to wander around the whole park and i didn't have um, enough time yesterday to properly see everything and i've just come back to things that even i have seen today again just to get a more of a, an appreciation and, and more out of them so um yeah fantastic facility um running low on battery so i'll have to uh probably end soon and i'll, I'll do a bit of like a more of a debrief um, after this, after I've charged a bit, but otherwise, Hartley's Crocodile Adventures, like about Cairns, I don't know, I can't remember how it was, 50 minutes or so from Cairns or something they said, 20, 25 from Port Douglas, excellent, excellent, definitely make it to, uh, if you're keen on wildlife, part of your, your trip, it is a beautiful place just to wander around in, as you can see, beautiful facility, very well kept, excellent range of animals, um, and not just native as well, I might add. They've got some in the form of the reptile house, they've got a few exotic reptiles there, and then they've also got some cotton top tamarins, so excuse me, little monkeys as well, which is like a little taste of something uh, cool. I can't think of any other exotics that they've got cruising around, like alligators and stuff like that. But um, yeah, excellent facility, really, really enjoyed it, exceeded my expectations, and um, yeah, if I've got any other footage, I'll run it now. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. And hopefully you got a, a bit of enjoyment and a bit of an idea of, of what these, uh, what Hartley's has got to show. And if you ever make it up here um, or you're on, yeah, on your way, um, definitely make it part of your trip. Uh, very well worth it. Uh, very worthwhile. Beautiful place. Cheers, guys. Until next time, have a good one.